<laughs> Hello, happy Sabbath. Um, we, um, we hope you are well. We're sorry about that. It's our network connection that is giving us problems. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> please let us know if you can hear us. Last week we experienced a similar scenario and we lost connect connection and continued to speak only to realize at the end that we did not record anything and no one could hear us yeah. actually, sadly. So please if you can hear us, please just let us know. If anyone can hear us, just let us know that we are there so that we don't have a repeat of what happened last, last week. week yeah. yeah, okay. So, uh, thank you. welcome. Oh, someone put a like. Mm. Okay, so let's say something. Thank you. Um, we hope you can hear us. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. We are praying for the network. Hopefully it works. Network has been a challenge, so we hope today we will win. Before we begin... Oh, excellent. Thank you, Siswake. Ah, thank you. Alrighty, so before we begin, I'm going to ask Uncle Deeps to give us a word of prayer. Uh, let's pray. Our Father who art in heaven, I'd like to thank you this afternoon for giving us yet another chance to share your word. May you please guide us. May you please allow us to say only that which you want us to say. Mm -hmm. May you please give us network to present your word. We pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Okay, you put a guy cool. <laughs> Great, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us this Sabbath. We are on chapter 28, um, and the topic is okay. This is what is also. Hi, Miss Tembi, how are you? Miss Tembella, I think she can hear us as well. Thank you so much, guys, for communicating. Um, right, we are on chapter 28, and the topic is facing life's record yeah. facing life's record and in some great controversy copies it will be written the investigative judgment uh -huh. so that's the same chapter so facing life's records really begins when daniel sees um christ going to the ancient of days and as he returns to the ancient of days you know this is what has been mistakenly assumed to be the second coming of christ but he notices that 10,000 are ministering unto him and the judgment begins. And so when the judgment books are opened, this is what the pioneers discovered to be 1844, where it is revealed to us that the investigative judgment begins. And so it is um, from 1844 that the lives of those who have lived professing to be Christians since whenever there was a nation, so those that believed in God, their lives um, are brought before the judge for scrutiny and the decision is made. Now let us remember that this judgment is only for those who profess to be Christians. So regardless of your denomination, it is only for those who say, we believe in Jesus, we believe that Jesus died for us. And the judgment begins, the books are given. And Ellen White says that, um, I'll expound on this quote, that if the curtain that heaven and earth were to be opened half of the deeds that we the deeds that we do now would have not been done and the words spoken now would have been left unspoken you know that is such um, a sobering thought and so she goes on to highlight that it is during the investigative judgment that the books are open so we're told that the different types of books that are there, the book of life um, evil deeds that will have done and it said that there are so many things that are kept in record on the word of God. Then lastly, it says that those who have believed in God, but who have gotten tired of waiting, might draw back. And this is where the risk is being um, projected that they might neglect. That they might reject Christ or completely leave the faith. And so this is our chapter for today. Let's get into it while we still have network. All right. Um, so our first quotation comes from Daniel chapter 7, the one that Mara was talking about. Um, so it just it is just reminding us that Jesus is in the most holy place and there's a judgment that's going on. Um, and Jesus at the same time is atoning for those who 
want to be atoned for. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, a lawyer won't uh, be there for you uh, if you don't want him or her to be there for you. So it's those who want their sins to be cleansed, those who want an attorney to be there for them, they are the ones whom Jesus um, is standing in for. So it is my prayer, let it be your prayer as well, that whilst the judgment is going on, Jesus might stand in for you. Because on ourselves we can't. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he doesn't force. And how we conduct ourselves, how we pray, how we, we talk to others, how we spend time in his word, it's what shows if we are actually uh, seeking for an attorney or not. I'll just read part of the of the verse which is from first Peter chapter 4 verse 17 which says just men must begin at the house of God and if it is first began at us what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel mm -hmm. so this is just to to emphasize what Mara was saying to say judgment is going to begin with those who profess to be following Jesus Christ they need to move on to those who don't what who don't uh, really follow Jesus Christ. We will move on to our second quotation. Okay, so the next quotation is touching on <clears throat> the various books that exist in heaven, the books of frequent, right? So the first book is the book of life, which contains the names of all who have entered into the service of God. And so the story that is highlighted is when the disciples come and they say, Oh, demons, ah, we cast out demons in your name, Lord. Did you know we did so many wonderful things in your name? And the Lord says, Do not rejoice for the works that you have done. Rather rejoice that your names are written in the book of life. Okay, you can go on. Baby, you look here in verse 20. I wrote it here. I'm sorry about that. The Holy Spirit has revealed to both of us. So, here we are told that a book exists. So, you know, um, there's a song that says, um, I want to know if my name is written there. And I think the correct understanding of that song would be if my name is still written there. We're listening to a documentary which was saying that, no, it was a presentation, which was saying that the pioneers understood this concept and they'd actually greet each other on Sabbath at church saying we hope that your name remains in the record so this is the correct thing that is our names are being scrutinized in the book of life the prayer is that our names remain in the book of life in the uh, book of life the next book is the book of remembrance a book of remembrance is written before god in which are recorded the good deeds of those who fear the lord and who meditate on his name there every temptation resisted, every evil overcome, every word of tender pity expressed is faithfully chronicled, and every act of sacrifice, every suffering, and every sorrow endured for Christ is remembered. You know, it's so comforting to know sometimes you feel like, ah, my good deeds go unnoticed. Uh, carnal men, uh, we are in the habit of wanting to do things and getting appreciation and someone saying thank you for doing something. And if that person forgets to say thank you for doing something, we remind them to say, oh, you're welcome, you know, that type of scenario. Sometimes we feel some type of way because someone has not said thank you. But we are being told here that God has a book of remembrance. For every sin overcome, imagine it's for your own good. You've overcome, you've, you've resisted that hot girl at work. Because you are faith, you know you are faithful to your beautiful wife. Mm. Beautiful wife. She's mm. hard, but mm. please. The Lord is saying that even though it's for your own good, for your marriage to endure, he remembers this good thing. It's a good thing and it is worth remembering. And so he's actually going to award you for something that you have done for your own benefit. That is very comforting. And so may we not be discouraged, even though the world does not recognize the good that we do, even though our colleagues or whoever is around us does not recognize, God knows and he remembers. Um, we were doing Genesis chapter 7 verse 1 and God remembered Noah. God is also going to remember us. And so the last 
uh, book, no, it's not the last one, but on this point, there is a record also of the sins of men. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Every idle word that may have been spoken, they will give account in the day of judgment. The secret purposes, the motives appear in the unerring register of God, will both bring light um, the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. <sighs> you know, this one is quite... Um, alarming to think that it is recorded with terrible exactness and the reason is that <laughs> the witnesses in heaven the councils are not men they are angels and so these witnesses you know when i if i'm to commit a crime and tembela my friend is called to say tembela be the witness in this case she's probably going to be scared to tell the truth as it is even though i am guilty but angels have sworn an oath to allegiance to god in quotes and they have not in them the ability to lie to god anymore and at this point because they exist they know what happened before the crime during the crime and after the crime as they give um record to god of what happened it is with terrible exactness so i think that you know sometimes you might say ah they judged me unfairly it wasn't correct but before god before the counsel of god angels themselves are witnesses may god help us to remember that we are going to stand in judgment one day and i'll expound on this point later lest i spill the beans for now so those are the books that we want you to remember for purposes um of this lesson okay. yeah um the next quotation says every man's work passes in review before god mm -hmm. and is registered for faithfulness or unfaithfulness so everything that we do is either we are being faithful or unfaithful mm -hmm. there's no need to ground and God actually sees the record. Mm. That record actually goes before God. You know, there are some of those white lies or some things that we just use to get away with uh, some things. God is actually acquainted with everything that's happening here. So may we please allow God to help us. Because like we mentioned earlier, Jesus is willing to help us in every situation. Where you know that you have a tendency to lie to be unfaithful or some things that you are so used to they might not be as huge but those small tendencies ask god for strength to leave those tendencies opposite each name in the books of heaven is entered with terrible exactness every wrong word every selfish act you know there are times that we do some things for other people who are not aware of what we are intending to do at the end of the day we just do those things with some selfishness in ourselves mm -hmm. where we know that if i do this to him or her he's going to do this back to me so as he or she is happy to say ah anybody has done this for me i know they will return um the favor in a way that i want doing things selfishly god knows and he is recording um for God shall bring every work into judgment. That's Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13 and 14. The Apostle James admonishes his brethren, So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. We should always know, we should always remember, in whatever we do, that one day we are going to be judged. May the Lord help us. Uh, you can... You read okay. my verse. All right. No, go on. So you can go to the next one. Okay, uh, I'll go on. Every selfish act, every unfulfilled duty. There are things that we are supposed to do for other people that we never fulfilled and no one asked us. God will ask us about those things. Um, and every secret sin, secret sins, we need to confess them. It's not like we just have to go on top of a hill and tell everyone, you know, on this day I did this and this and this. Let's talk to God about it. God is saying, come now and let us reason together. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it. Let's ask God to remind us of those sins that we hid uh, in the past. 
with every artful dissembling, heaven sent warnings or reproofs neglected, wasted moments, unimproved opportunities, the influence exerted for good or for evil, mm. with its far-reaching results, mm -hmm. all are chronicled by the recording angel. Mm. Everything. There are some things that we just did and walked away, which are actually going on. The consequences, some people are still suffering from the consequences. Um, the book is saying we will actually be shown and we will be judged according to all those things. As the books of record are opened in, ju in the judgment, the lives of all who have believed on Jesus come in review from God, beginning with those who first lived upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Our advocate presents the case of each successive generation mm -hmm. and closes with the living. So those who are dead are the ones who are going to be judged first, then it will come to, to us later. Every name is mentioned. Every case closes, closely investigated. Names are accepted. Names are rejected. Mm. As our names are going before uh, the judgment seat, some are accepted, some are rejected. Just like that. What we will know are the results. You know, when we are applying into school or um, into college, we just apply, then we wait. Then the day when they release their accepted uh, students, that's when we will know whether you are accepted or not. That's what's going on right now. Whilst we don't know, our names are being called for judgment. Mm. And it's actually being accepted or rejected. Just ask yourself how you are going to spend tomorrow, how you spent yesterday, how you are spending this moment. If your name is to be called, will it be accepted or rejected? Um, when any have sins remaining upon the books of record, unrepented of and unforgiven, their names will be blotted out of the book of life. Those sins that we are hiding, may we please ask for forgiveness from mm. God so that they don't hinder us from being, uh, from remaining in the book of life. And the record of their good deeds will be erased from the books of remembrance. Those good things we did, or those good things we do, they are not going to make our names remain in the book of life. Mm -hmm. But repenting our sins, being clear before God. Mm -hmm. uh, we can get this from Exodus chapter 32 verse 33. When Moses was saying, God, kill me and all these people, and instead of killing all these people, and God is like, I will just blot out the names of those who sinned against me. That's Exodus 32, verse 33. Whosoever had sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Mm -hmm. If you are sinning against God, our names will be blotted out. Um, Ezekiel also goes on in uh, Ezekiel 18, verse 24. When the righteous... It's not a church goer or someone who professes to be doing nice things. When someone who's righteous turneth away from his righteousness mm -hmm. and committeth iniquity, mm -hmm. all his righteousness that he had done shall not be mentioned. Mm -hmm. We, I don't think I'm even righteous. But sometimes I fool myself to think that some good things that I do uh, will make me, will, will, I, what can I say, will get me a seat in heaven. Because sometimes I do good things. But here God is saying, even the righteous people, those who are righteous, who have not sinned, if they sin, yeah. their names will be blotted out from the book of life. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give to Mara. She seems to be complaining. Thanks, we No, I was saying you were saying I don't think I'm righteous, and I was saying no. Right. But I was agreeing with you that you are not righteous. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, thank you, sweetie. Um, you know, it said that for your throat, your record, okay, your record of sins has to be clear for the book of life and remembrance to remain with your name. But if your name is in the record of sins, then the book of remembrance and the book of life will be without your name. Mm -hmm. So for those that like equations, that's the equation for the book.
you know i found something very comforting may in this lesson may we not get overwhelmed and feel like oh no god is out to judge me there's something that's very comforting that i found the quote says that while jesus is pleading for the subjects of his grace satan accuses them before god as transgressors the great deceiver has sought to lead them into skepticism to cause them to lose confidence in god to separate themselves from his love and break his law you know it said that jesus himself pleads on our behalf we are not even there in the judgment room as it is going on but jesus is the one who is pleading on our behalf it got me th- excuse me it got me thinking of how when certain things happen when you're instructed to do something and you can't do to certain unfor- unforeseen circumstances that might genuinely be beyond your control it is very difficult for people to understand and they just judge to say ah but she didn't do this this is what i had instructed her yet sometimes you genuinely have a genuine cause for why you're not able to do it right but when jesus looks at the scene that you have broken he just doesn't say oh okay so today you broke the sabbath so you're going to hell so today you didn't do this so he looks at it from the cause i remember in one sabbath school lesson we were mentioning that jesus judges 3d um or beyond that he actually looks at the motive the cause and the result of what has happened how comforting is it that you have a god who understands that you have given in you know there are some sins that you genuinely commit and you feel like ah but i didn't want to do this how come i was overtaken by this and you yourself don't even understand why you committed the sin but jesus is a better representer of you than you can be of yourself why because he knows the intrinsic cause of sin so he looks at you and he thinks huh does mara have something within her blood that is causing her to act this way could she have inherited something from her dad that causes her to behave in this manner and jesus addresses that issue individually and he says okay god look at mara because of the world is of sin that she's living in this is why she has done this how best can we assist her because she genuinely regrets this and then heavenly angels are deployed to be at your assistance to help you at your point of need where you constantly fall but because now you have said lord i'm being overtaken by this sin i genuinely can't do it by myself the lord gives you the help that you need that is tailor made not for the sin but for the root of the sin that exists in you and so at this point so i hope we understand my brothers and sisters that when the close of probation is to happen it's going to happen because jesus will have done everything for us to be saved everything is not jesus just coming to die on the cross fantastic that's part of everything but everything also involves the time that we are living in now and the ministry of heavenly angels the ministry of the holy spirit in our lives that's why the lord is dealing with us individually such that we see his hand and really notice that if i'm to miss heaven it's because of the hardness of my heart so as the devil accuses us before jesus jesus says these are recipients of my grace the question therefore comes how can we plead for grace when there is no sin it is impossible because grace comes as a result of transgression where we deserve to be punished jesus then pleads and he says my grace is sufficient for them lord forgive them may the devil not fool us my brothers and sisters into thinking that the law of god does not matter may god open our eyes to realize that we need grace so much because we are such um terrible sinners and if we go with penitence and a contrite heart jesus is willing to forgive us thank you all right um the next one talks about what will happen in the end you know we're talking about sins uh mm-hmm. why judgment is going on and stuff so what's going to be the end of all these sorry If, all right sorry so i wanted to say that this is where the verse from zachariah chapter 3 verse 2 i think which says is this not a Or thing that has been plugged out of the fire you know i like the image that's there in that verse 
the log that's burning cannot take itself out of the fire it is at the point that it is burning so much that the lord himself plugs it out of the fire i hope you understand how much god is willing to save us that when we are weak when we can't when we are burning with desire and zeal and we've reached our lowest god comes and he plucks us out of the fire and so when the devil accuses us jesus is saying i have plucked him out of the fire and he is accepted where i am and not continued burning therefore he is worthy or she is worthy of heaven mm. yeah thank you all right uh so the the we we're talking about what will happen to all these sins at the end of the day mm -hmm. you know if you don't commit your sins if you don't um sorry repent your sins those sins will be there mm to witness against you mm. when you are going to stand uh, in, in the judgment. They will actually be there to say, don't you belong to you? And that's when you actually see that you don't deserve to be among those who are going to be saved. Mm. But if we repent our sins, Revelation chapter 20 verse 3 says, from verse 1, but I'll just read from verse 3. Uh, okay, 20 verse 1 to 3, then I sit down. Okay, I'm already sitting. <laughs> then I stop. And I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, and he should, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed, as a, li a little season. Mm -hmm. Okay, what he's talking about here? <laughs> a thousand years. You know, going for a day facing the devil is not easy. But we are going to have a thousand years if we repent our sins. Where God is just going to shut him down. And even the time he's going to be loosed, it's not that he's going to be loosed to come to us who will be saved. But he's just going to deceive those who they have not repented before God. Mm -hmm. So this is the end game. Mm. All the sins that you are repenting are just being put on the one who has been causing trouble. Uh, this uh, was actually represented in the sanctuary, in the sanctuary that we are learning about. That scapegoat where they would put all the sins on the day of atonement. Mm. Remember we are in the day of atonement. Mm. Where the sins are being taken from the sanctuary so that they can be put on that scapegoat. The process that's going out, up right now is for sin to be abolished forever. Mm -hmm. It's not like God is doing this judgment just because he wants us to feel that he can judge us. Mm -hmm. He wants to put sin in its place mm -hmm. and destroy it for good. Mm -hmm. So judgment is actually good for us. Mm -hmm. And it's not like he's saying, come on your own and stand before judgment. He's saying Jesus is ready to represent you if you want. Mm -hmm. May the Lord help us. Okay, it's not easy. But the way God does it, and how much effort he's putting into it, salvation is easy and cheap. Mm -hmm. If we allow God to work in our lives, mm -hmm. we can move on to the next quotation. Okay, thank, thank you, Sui. Could the veil which separates the visible from the invisible world be swept back, and the children of men behold an angel recording every word and deed which they must meet again in the judgment? How many words that are daily uttered would remain unspoken? How many deeds would remain undone? You know, it said that we are to meet these again in the day of judgment. How many things have we just carelessly said and thought, ah, all right, you know? It said that, did we know if the veil could just be open for a bit that separates heaven and earth? Those words that we have spoken in the heat of passion, in the heat of anger, would have been left unspoken. Because we are going to need to view them again in the day of judgment and give an account as to why we spoke them. Ah, yeah. May, you know, I used to be scared of being naughty, especially um, for if my mom were to find out. I was terrified of my mom. Not terrified, enough, but I didn't want to disappoint her. Yes, I was terrified that I would get some serious beating, but I also didn't want to disappoint her, you know? And so I would just avoid doing certain things because I felt, eh, my mom is to find out. 
And so now I'm thinking, my mom has her own skeletons that she would never want me to discover now. That she would not want my grandma to discover or anyone else. And I'm afraid of this person who is sinful too. How about when I stand before a God who is sinless? Sinless not because he was separated from the temptation of sin or it was impossible for him. A God that has walked on earth and still remains sinless. How will I say, Jesus, this is my excuse, when he went through everything and he says, I want to help you for free. And so may God really help us to realize that not only is there a veil that separates heaven and earth, but that God himself dwells in our hearts. The Holy Spirit lives in the hearts of everyone. I don't mean that in a pantheistic way. I mean it in the way that we are told that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, this is where the Holy Spirit is dwelling right now. I hope you understand my point. And so when we do anything and everything, do we consider that we have God in our presence? It's just that we are not seeing him because we are blinded by sin. If we do see him, a lot of the things that we do right now, we would not do. May God help us to reach that point. And so now it's said that um, no value is attached to your mere profession um, or faith in Christ. Only the love which is shown by works is counted genuine. Yet it is love alone which in the sight of heaven makes an act of value. So what is being said is some of us just profess to love God and don't do anything act towards our love some of us do act but not from love and so the root or the stem of our actions is not prompted by love and so the point like the topic sentence in that paragraph was that in the judgment the use of every talent will be scrutinized so whatever you're doing right now are you doing it out of love are you doing it because you know that you need to be working for god if you're just doing it because you have to be doing it, this is why they say that it is not counted of value because only love, uh, an age that stems from love is counted of any value in the eyes of heaven. May God help us to develop and to have the desire to will to do what is right. I think this was where I shared a verse that Uncle Libs um, shared with us that he's able um, to make us to will and to do what mm. is right. To love, I don't think it comes naturally for most of us. To love someone, someone who is doing bad, someone who is being mean to you, it does not come naturally. But it comes from God himself. May we pray for that um, understanding of being like Christ. I don't know if I should mention this one now. Lest Uncle Lib says I've taken his point. So if he leaves it, then I'll mention what I wanted to share here. Yeah. I think you can. Okay. So it's here. Yeah, you can. Okay. It says, uh, <laughs> there is a record of unfulfilled duties, right? To their fellow men. Of forgetfulness of the Savior's claims. Here it is being said that in heaven there is a record of unfulfilled duties, the things that we're supposed to do that we did not do. And also, a record of the forgetfulness of the Savior's claims. And so I was listening where it was saying that when Jesus says as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the end. It said that they did eat, they did drink, they did marry, they did give into marriage. And then it said that in the parable um, that the guests were invited and one said, oh no, I can't come, I've just bought um, cattle. And the other one said, oh, I just bought land. I honestly can't come, I'm sorry. The other one said, I've made a wife, a beautiful wife. I can't come. And these were valid excuses um, for not being able to work. In fact, um, Randy says that these were courteous Christians. They remembered to excuse themselves, to say, no, sorry, we can't come. But it was here that they were so engrossed in life's duties that they forgot the claims of the Savior. What claims does Jesus have on our lives today? that we are not fulfilling genuinely because of the cares of the world because you need to feed your families because you need to be providing because you need to be working you need to be developing yourself you need to be growing in your career but what 
claims of the savior are we not doing now you know when we speak of unfulfilled duties it is often the case that we assume that it is just based on the things of this earth that we are supposed to be doing how about the unfulfilled duties that heaven has assigned to us are we executing them or do we have earthly reasons not sinful reasons but just earthly reasons that are clouding and removing okay Okay. Uh, I would just like to say, you know, in context with what Mara is saying, I will read the quote there. There are duties that we haven't fulfilled that we don't even know because we haven't taken time to ask God what we are supposed to do. How many times do we ask ourselves, ah, what's the purpose? What does God want me to do? Have we taken time to ask God? Or it's just discussions at church or with our friends where we are saying, uh, how do I find out my talent? How do I? Then we just leave it in those discussions. Have we really asked God, what is my duty? Mm -hmm. There is something that we are supposed to do on an individual basis. Do we know it? And at the end of the day, when you are going to die or when Jesus is going to come, we won't even know what we are supposed to do. Is that duty mentioned, uh, recorded as fulfilled or unfulfilled? Is it going to stand against us in judgment? Mm. Let's take time. The same way you ask uh, people maybe in the streets to say, what's really giving people money these days? How are people getting this and this? We should also put as much effort in asking God, what do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. So that we can fulfill those duties that we have. Amen. Okay. We can. Ah, I forgot him. But anyway, thank you, sweetie, for that interjection. So, thanks, baby. So, you know, it's being said here that I'll just read this and then I'll go leave this the next quote. Intelligent beings, professed followers of Christ, are absorbed in the acquirement of wealthy possessions or the enjoyment of earthly pleasures. Money, time, and strength are sacrificed for display and self indulgence. But few are the moments devoted to prayer, to searching the scriptures to humiliation of soul and confession of sin. So what is being said here is that while these things are not bad, the acquiring of money is not bad, um, enjoying earthly pleasures is probably not bad, depending on what they are, but when that is then compared to the time that you, pay, you spend in searching the scriptures, studying the word and confessing your sins, then there is a problem. And so, hey, uh, I, I, I don't know how exactly God can help us. You know, no matter what walk of life you are, whether you're a housewife, whether you're going to work, the cares of this world overtake you. Mm. You have to be deliberate to say, Lord, how do I fulfill the duties that you have claimed, placed upon me? You know, I'm just thinking of something that, where was I reading it? Let me think where I was reading it. Wade was saying that we are stewards of the capital of heaven and when jesus returns okay yes so it says here how we have been employed with the capital lent us of heaven will the lord at his coming receive his own with usury? what this is saying is that the capital is of heaven which means it is heavenly business that we have been entrusted with when the Lord returns, he is not looking into the multiplication of money. <laughs> it's good to make money, but the capital God has lent us is for heavenly business. Mm. So, multiplication in that sense, the currency is heavenly. The currency is not USDs. The currency is not bonds. The currency is heavenly currency. And so when he asks and says, have you multiplied the talents? <laughs> He is not saying, have you multiplied the talents in USDs? He is saying, have you multiplied the currency, the talents in heavenly currency? And so you then ask yourself, what is your duty in multiplication of heavenly currency? And we do know that it is the duty of soul winning. 
So when God asks you, Tembela, to say, Tembela, have you multiplied the currency? The question is going to be, have you won souls for Christ? I have lent you this talent. I, whatever your talent is, even if it's within the field of making money, fantastic, make money, but how have you converted that talent into heavenly currency? <sighs> All right. Um, thank you for saying everything that I wanted to say. Um, so I'll read the next paragraph, which says, Satan invents unnumbered schemes to occupy our minds that they may not dwell upon the very work with which we ought to be best acquainted. Um, what it's saying here is, you know, each and every day, when you wake up, what's on your mind? You know, they are not bad things, yes, but are they uplifting you? Are they helping you to see what you're supposed to do for God? Mm. Or they are just things of this earth that are occupying your mind. If you see your mind each and every day being occupied with some things which seems good but they, which are not beneficial, know that those are the schemes of the devil. God is saying, I can rescue you, but if you are willing. Mm. The devil has put so much scheme. Some are visible, some are not. But a scheme is not. You only see the results after being involved that I ah, yeah, I was duped. Um, the arch deceiver hates the great truths that bring to view an atoning sacrifice and an all-powerful mediator. Mm. He knows that with him everything depends on his diverting mind from Jesus and his truth. Those who would thank you, who would share the benefits of Savior's meditation, mediation should permit nothing to interfere with their duty to perfect holiness in the fear of God. Mm. Your holiness. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be holy. We are supposed to be holy. And nothing should interfere. Nothing. Not even my wife. What more WhatsApp groups and Facebook? Mm. And those kids that are being sent each and every minute. What more my workplace? Nothing should compromise my holiness. The precious hours, instead of being given to pleasure, to display how much time does it take to take a selfie, to pause, to post it, to display, mm -hmm. how much time does it take to buy something with the mind of displaying it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> or to gain seeking, mm -hmm. precious hours spent to gain seeking. Gain seeking is not a sin if you look at it. But it's being asked here how, many, how much time do you waste doing that? Seeking for gain, planning for gain, should be devoted to any prayerful study of the word of truth. If you are going to put on a weight to say, should I spend the next hour really pursuing holiness or adding a an extra dollar or two, God is saying it is better for you to seek holiness than to seek for gain. Mm. But is it that we are doing? We have every excuse to look for gain in case tomorrow I won't be there for my children or for my what? Mm -hmm. I should be seeking more money. In case tomorrow I don't get a chance to pursue this deal. So maybe when Sabbath comes, that's when I will really sit down and start to study. May God help us. Um, okay, so the next quotation is... Oh, I'm going to finish one. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Okay, so it said here, um, Tatiana, yeah, welcome, sweetie. Thank you. She's saying, Marwat Bazir, mm -hmm. unfulfilled duty, Paka Oma. Very, yeah, <laughs> it's a challenge. May God really help us, you know. <sighs> so it said that all who have received the light upon these subjects are to bear testimony of the great truths which God has committed to them. And I highlighted that all who have received <sighs> the light upon these subjects are to bear testimony. You know, bear testimony... <sighs> Is one thing to profess, but another to also bear testimony in the way we live. 
And so every one of us, if we have received light upon these matters, we are being told that we ought to bear testimony in the way that we are living, most importantly. You know, we are expected to conduct ourselves in a certain manner because of where we know the Lord is right now in the sanctuary, because we know that he's doing the work of investigative judgment. So when we go to work, do our associates see us bearing testimony in how we are working? Not you needing to preach and say, oh, guys, Jesus is coming again, blah, blah, blah. <sighs> do we bear testimony in the way that we live our lives? I want to join this point with another quotation that I was supposed to share here, which is saying that, the purity and devotion of one will not offset the want of these qualities in another. Though all nations are to pass in judgment before God, yet he will examine the case of each individual with a close, with as close and searching scrutiny as if there were no another upon the earth. Everyone must be tested and found without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. You know, I was sharing with um, with Uncle Libs that uh, it has been the case for a long time that, you know, there are some people that you just look and say, ah, oh, okay, this is the mark and standard for my Christianity. This is what I ought to be doing. And so if this person is not doing it, if I do it, won't I have done too much? Won't I have gone ahead of myself? Like in this spiritual walk, I'm coma. I hope you get what I'm saying. So to say, ah, but Libs, ah, Libs is still doing this. So I'm comfortable in where I'm at because, I mean, he's supposed to be my older brother. So if he's not yet doing this, maybe I'll have gone ahead of other Christians. But here it's being said that in the day of judgment, the righteousness of one will not offset that um, of another. And although all nations are to go before God in judgment, the case of each individual will be examined as though there was not another being on earth. So it's important for us to realize that God has individual claims on us. Not based on what Mara is doing, not based on what Libs is doing, not based on what everyone else in the church is doing, but based on your own personal conviction. And that's why we are told that in the last days, the days that we are going to be living in, are not going to be times where we need to go with the flow. They are not going to be times where we need to say, okay, what is Sister X, Y, and Z doing? They might be doing that, but before the judgment, each case is going to be scrutinized as though there is not another being on earth. Similarly, if they were not another soul for whom Christ would have died on earth, he would have just died for one person. So let us consider this as a personal relationship that has to grow. Has to grow between us and between me and Christ. Not based on what anyone else is doing, but simply based on the claims that Christ has for each our lives, for each in our lives. Uh, thank you, baby. Um, mm. Then after all this, Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, mm -hmm. for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Mm -hmm. After saying some things which seems a bit harsh, which seems a bit impossible, Jesus is saying, it's not your duty, just let me take care of mm. whatever you are thinking that it's difficult. Yeah. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Uh, that's Matthew 11, verse 29 and 30. Let none then regard their defects as incurable. Mm -hmm. God will give faith and grace to overcome them. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll read 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. Mm. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Mm -hmm. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities than that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Mm -hmm. When we look at ourselves, there is no hope. Yeah. There is no way out. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is saying, you know what? Mm -hmm. For my glory to be seen, it has to go through 
a weak person like you. Let's just allow Christ to do greater things through us. I'll read my last quotation, which says, When the work of the investigative judgment closes, the destiny of all will have been decided for life or death. Mm -hmm. Probation is ended a short time before the appear appearing of the Lord in the clouds of heaven. Mm -hmm. Christ in the revelation looking forward to that time declares, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Mm -hmm. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Mm -hmm. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to his work shall be. All the time we are saying, ah, you know, these are the last days. You know, these are the last days. Eee! We are in the final days. What we are just saying is we are about to come to a time where Jesus is going to say, those who are holy, stay holy still. Mm -hmm. We are just admitting to the fact that a judgment is going on, which is deciding who is going to be saved and who is not going to be saved. It's not enough to know that these are the last days. We should also know that a judgment is going on. And the next moment when Jesus is going to appear, it means a judgment would have been passed. And we don't know when our names are going to be called up for judgment. May the Lord help us. We don't do good things or try to do good things for the fear of judgment. Mm -hmm. But we do good things because we love God and He loves us. He has the best things for us that He is preparing for us in heaven. So let us do what's good for us and for others so that we can make up to him for heaven. The devil who is the owner of these sins is going to be destroyed one day. God doesn't want to destroy us together with him. Mm -hmm. We want to thank God we had that work today. I don't doubt it. Prayer works. Yeah. Amen. Uh, <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Uncle uh, <laughs> We have reached the end of chapter 28. Um, probably I just wanted to say an Uncle Lee's point that the close of probation on the part of God is not going to be an arbitrary act. Mm -hmm. It is not to punish you to say, ah, okay, so you've chosen sin, that's fine. Mm -hmm. It is just to confirm that, okay, this is what you want, sweetie. I'm going to do this for you. And so God says, okay, if you want to remain unjust, that's fine, sweetie. Um, I love you so much and I won't force you to be just. So it's okay, you can remain like this. And uh, a classic example is that of the people during Noah's time. When the Lord closed the ark, Initially, they were a bit scared and everything, but after a few days, they actually wanted to kill and burn Noah in the ark to show how much they had not repented of their sins. And when it starts raining, they don't cry to say, Noah, please open the door of the ark for us. Excuse me, because they have repented. They do this because they are afraid of the consequences. Similarly, when Jesus comes and he's going to, when the close of probation occurs, remember, by the time that the plagues come, these people will not even repent or cry out to God. This is when they'll actually say, let's get rid of these Christians. They are the ones that are causing disaster. We don't want to repent of our sin, which is the problem. So may God help us realize that God is a loving God and that proclamation is not going to be to punish people, but to say, okay, this is what you have chosen. I respect your choice and I love you. Therefore, may God help us to choose life. Because God wants to give us life in abundance. And yeah, that's chapter 28. My brothers and sisters, we are done. Uh, may God bless you and keep you in this interesting time that we are living in. And we believe these are the last days. How last, we don't know, but may God keep us. And may we meet in heaven. May we do our duty for our souls and the souls of the lost. May we pray for them and diligently try to bring them into the fold. Okay? Shall we pray? Our kind and heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for allowing the network to work today. We thank you for all the gifts that you give us. Electricity, food, data, clothing, shelter. We don't take it for granted. There are so many that are troubled during these times. May you meet them at their point of need. May you help our brothers and sisters who are seeking a closer walk with you, Savior. 
May the blood of Jesus atone for their sins and may they find themselves, may they present themselves with contrite hearts as recipients of this grace that you give unto us. May we love you more with each passing day. May our faith grow on an individual level and may we prepare for that great day that is soon to come. Trials are sure to come, but we have hope in the coming of Jesus. Lord, please prepare us. We are excited about this hope and we are happy that you love us. This is our humble prayer in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Right, all right, all right. We have reached the end of our service. Bye. Bye. <laughs> See you next week. Thank you for staying with us, everyone. We love you. Take care. Bye.